Welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm going to do a walkthrough of how to build a Jeopardy game in Storyline. So the example I'm showing you is actually built on someone else's Jeopardy template. Uh, this person, John Harker. I built this project forever ago. And you can log in and download that here. I can put that um, link in the chat box as well. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the, the notes below the video. Um, so I adapted John Harker's template and um, made my own version of it. And my walkthrough today, of, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna build this out with you together. I don't have a you know checklist of how to go through step by step. I'm just gonna kind of put it together and I've got some ideas um, since I played with this last time around and how I would build it out a little bit better. And um, I will share, uh, that file in the link that I put, the Dropbox link that is in the chat or the video notes. So I've got in that Dropbox folder, a fully built out version of this project that I will um, demo for you right now. And I've got a work in progress that we'll go through together that I'll, I'll pop into that Dropbox folder as well. Dropbox just doesn't want to sync at this moment in time. So <laughs> I'm sure it'll be synced up sometime tonight. Okay, so again, there's <laughs> five categories across the top. Uh, you've got your answers down below. It's a more compact version of the Jeopardy you see on TV. Of course, you can customize this to your heart's content and build out whatever categories. You want more categories, your categories, more questions, your questions, whatever you want. Each one of these is clickable. You go in, the questioner stem is at the top here, and you choose an answer below by clicking on it. And I'll tell you if you got it correct or not up here at the top, as well as with a circle or a red square below. I click this box to return back to the front. Um, as you click on each one, if you get it correct or not, uh, let's try another one, get it wrong. Uh, you'll get the points if you get it correct, and otherwise your points just stay the same. Honestly, I can't remember the exact rules of Jeopardy. I haven't watched it in, in a little while, uh, but you get the points if you get it correct. You don't get the points if you don't get it. Um, we don't go any fancier than that in this version of Jeopardy, though it could get pretty fancy with Double Jeopardy and those um, additional challenges, which would be kind of fun. Um, or Daily Doubles, for, for instance. Um, so that's that's it. It's pretty straightforward. The, one of the biggest challenges is going to be writing the questions for this. Um, let's turn another one. Oh, got it incorrect. Got back my question or my answer. I'm sorry, my score is still the same. I'm really uh, not on my game tonight. Um, I made this a little bit fancy, build, building in a reset. I've got credits in here as well. At the very top, I've got the fact that I adapted this from John Harker's um, uh, template. So if you click on that in the published version uh, that comes out um, here, I think you have to log in. You have to create a free account and articulate storyline uh, e-learning heroes to be able to download this. But his template's here for you to download. It is nine nine years ago that he, he published this. You have to upgrade it to the current version and um, use it that way. Okay, so I'm gonna dive into building this out. Do either of you have any questions at this point? Okay. okay. Oh, well, actually, I'll, let me show you quick behind the scenes of how this is built out. Um, so this is how John Harker built it out, and I just adapted it for my own. I would do a slightly different build out, and I'll show you what I would do in just a second. But see here, you've got the main slide that has the actual game board on it. Please, please ignore some of this extra stuff here. I got real fancy with like resets and fancy splash screens and things. At its heart, it's just one slide that has the kind of game board on it, and then each... Um, question is actually three layers on the side here. We can definitely simplify this uh, because I think you can probably you know, build out just one layer or with um, an additional slide. We'll, we'll talk about that in just a minute. So you can see there's actually quite a few layers on the slide here. And I had some other fancy stuff that, you know, I was automatically resetting the game or playing it live, things like that. Um, so pretty straightforward as far as there's, you know, the question uh, layer that's you know ready to be answered, and then of course the correct answer, and then the incorrect answer uh, will show up uh, there. And then we've got triggers, of course, that if they answer correctly, it's going to add the correct number of points uh, to their total score. And so there's not too many variables in here. <laughs> uh, but the important one here is just total points. 
And you can see that's used a lot. Oh yeah, then I had some music built in here too. You don't have to be too fancy about that. Basically, it is a total points variable. So let's actually just dive into building this out together from scratch. Um, again, this is kind of like how Lindsay would build it at the time. I used John Harker's template. Now that I've been doing Storyline for a long time, so I did that version like seven years ago, I would do it probably a little bit differently. Uh, first thing I want to do is I just want to make this slide widescreen because I love me some widescreen. All right, I've already got this saved. Again, this will be in your Dropbox folder through that link. Uh, it just hasn't synced yet. Uh, generally, if I work on things like our Storyline projects in the cloud, it tends to make Dropbox a little bit grumpy. Sometimes it corrupts. So this is not best practice. I should be working on this on my local desktop. If you ever get issues with um, working on a file, if it's getting if it's not saving correctly or something because you're saving it to the cloud as you go, try saving it locally instead of to the cloud. I like to play fast and, and loose and dangerous these days. So I'll just, I'll let it ride. All right, I'm gonna keep this example pretty simple. I'm not gonna get fancy with the graphic design or anything. I'm just gonna do kind of a quick build out so we can do that together. So first off, I'm just gonna put in my um, categories. Again, I'm gonna keep these simple too, just to make it really super clear. So category one, uh, it might've been too many, let me see. Yeah, I made too I made too many duplicates here. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I'll delete that one. Um, I always like to recommend using Storylines Align tool. If you select all of those, and then you go to Arrange, Align, you can align top, and that straightens them all out really nicely. But you can see see they're still not evenly distributed. So I'm gonna go once more to Arrange, Align, and then distribute horizontally, and then it makes them all perfect. And I am going to change the numbering again. I'm just doing this for illustration purposes. I trust that you would make this a lot nicer looking if you're doing your own Jeopardy. And again, you can use, you know, John Harker's template to make it fancier. Um, I just want to show you how to build this from scratch here. All right. So next up, I'm going to build in uh, one answer. So a nice rounded corner box there, for example. Um, I'll change the format a little bit just because I have to be a little bit slightly fancier. I don't know. Sure, bright blue. Uh, I'm going to make that, for example, 100 points. So what I always recommend is you build out uh, the pieces, one piece at the very beginning, and then you can always duplicate later on. So I'm going to start with just this one square, and we'll build out the others later on. So as you go, I always recommend that you name your slides and you name your objects on screen. So I'm going to name this, um, I'm just going to call this game board. This basically is the game board. And for each of these, I don't know. I don't know if it matters too much if these are named, but I like to be really tidy up front because you never know later on when you're building out triggers, you're gonna trip yourself up by not having nice tidy names. It also helps you be able to identify in the timeline what you're messing with, especially if you end up with like, you know, oh gosh, at least 15 of these answers. So I can end up with a lot of stuff in your timeline. It gets to be kind of messy kind of quickly. Okay, so that's done. Let's build out the states for this. Right now, I'm going to edit states. I'm gonna add a hover state. And the hover state, I can't remember if this one is built in or not. Let's see if there's an automatic built-in hover state. I can never remember if um, Storyline adds an effect for you if you have to manually add the effect in. Or I didn't do anything, okay. All right, I have to customize, let me customize that real quick here. And what I like to do is make it really subtle. Um, for example, you can just take the color and you can um, make it a little bit dimmer. Oh, why is it? Now oh, I can just do a shape effect, just way faster. Mm, so <laughs> this is where I take too much time deciding what I wanna do. All right, glow effect, that works great. All right. And then I'm going to go to story view. I want to rename this scene as well. It's going to be the game board scene. Um, now, in the original version of this that I just showed you, each question was actually three layers over here, which I thought was pretty messy. I'm going to try building out each question as just 
one slide instead of layers. So then each question can be its own slide. And if I need layers or states, they're all contained on that one slide and we have like less stuff going on the slide layers. I always wanna to try to keep the back end as neat as possible, especially when you're making something that's really complicated. So let's call this um, one. All right, so this is where the name kind of comes into play here. So cat one, I'm gonna label this slide cat one. 100 points, that's the 100 point answer here. So the idea is when they click on this, let's go ahead and build out that trigger now, jump to slide, cat one, 100, and user clicks rectangle one. And again, we can get crazy in naming these things too. Uh, so when they click on this, it's gonna take you to cat one, 100. And of course, in the final version of this, you go into the players set settings up here at the top, or you can go into story view actually, and you'll, um, uncheck all the next and previous buttons. I leave those in for right now just because it's nice for testing purposes. But before you publish and send this out, always get rid of all the next and back buttons. So people are actually playing the game, not just clicking next and back. And so it's you know really clear how the game is supposed to work. Um, same thing with the um, uh, player theme as well. Always, if I'm using the Storyline 360, in Articulate 360, so it always defaults to this modern um, player, but I would take away, you know, the menu board, I'll take away the header, I'll take away all these other things. I can show you how to do that too. It's pretty simple. It's just in player under advanced settings. And I just want to make it really nice and clean and tidy so users can just focus on the game itself. All right, so let's create our question slide. And I wanna do a very nice job in this question slide because this is the slide that I will duplicate to make all the other question slides. So let's just go ahead and insert a question. So I'm just gonna do a dummy question. Uh, what color is the sky? Always a super fun dummy question that anybody can answer. Beautiful, okay. And again, I'm not styling this fully out because you know, I don't want to bore you to tears. Um, I expect later on that you would style this out however you want it. And again, it really helps you save time down the road if you get the slide exactly how you want it. So when you go to duplicate it and you decide you want to make some sort of graphic design change, you can change that later on. Or even better, you can actually turn this into a master slide um, as a background or something. Anyways, that's a whole other thing that can get a little bit, little bit complicated. Um, if, you have, if you want it to be really interactive, you'll probably need to... Um, just keep it as a slide that you duplicate. Anyways, all right, so let's put in our shapes here, which will be the answer. So unlike regular Jeopardy, where you say the answer out loud in the form of a question, um, I did put a question here at the top and then you're just gonna click on your answer below. So again, not true Jeopardy, so it goes. Um, when you're making things, they're gonna be like asynchronous online activities. You just kind of do the best you can. Actually, is that what I want? No fill. Okay. Shape outline. I'm just going to make that a little bit heavier. Uh, I'm going to change the color a little bit. I know I used that color earlier. It's too. Oh, no. Don't do that. I want to make the outline that color just because. Okay. Um, and you want these things to be kind of clickable looking too. I don't know how clickable looking this is. I'm not going to worry too much about it right now. All right. So then I'm going to put in the text. As you can see, it defaulted to white text, so you need to change that to whatever color you want. I think that looks fine. This doesn't look very clickable. I'm going to change the color of this shape fill. I don't make really like, that nah, looks terrible. This is where I get real fussy with things. Maybe we'll just leave that. Okay, so bolded. You just want to make sure that the um, color and the text contrast enough for accessibility purposes. Like right now this isn't super readable. So I'm gonna choose a um, lighter color. So, oh, I don't know exactly what color this is. Ah, oh, I'm myself crazy. So maybe just make that a little bit lighter. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's fine, that's fine. Good enough, again, I would spend a lot more time making this fancy business fine. Um, then what I want to do is I'm gonna duplicate this, but I want it to have um, a correct state or an incorrect state. So of course, only one answer is gonna be correct, of course, depending on how you set this up with your own question. And then the other three answers will be incorrect. We have us do three answers all together. So we one correct, two incorrect. Um, so one of these needs to be styled as correct, one, two needs to be styled as incorrect. So let me duplicate that. 
yellow. Um, okay, so blue, of course, is gonna be correct. Yellow is gonna be incorrect. And then later on, I'll duplicate yellow to be the other incorrect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some states to this. So edit states. I'm going to, um, I do like having a hover state so people can like get that kind of tactile feeling when you're hovering over it. So I'll give the same sort of soft glow that I gave the um, uh, game piece on the game board. I'm gonna add the state. I'm probably gonna goof up something along the way. So bear with me when I do. All right, so correct, this is gonna be the correct state. And if they get it correct, how, what I would do is I'm going to put some sort of um, uh, symbol on top of the square itself. Okay. So again, I'm deviating from the example that I showed you that's already built out and you'll find in that Dropbox folder that John Harker created. This is how I would do it myself. Make a nice little green check, sure, it looks great. Um, okay, so I'm gonna copy that. So now there's a normal state, a hover state and a correct state. All right, so done with that. Uh, something that people don't often know is that if you select an object and you go home and then format painter, if you click on format painter after you selected your object, you can paint the format onto the object, another object that you're choosing, and it'll add the same state. So see, this has just had the one state before normal, now it has normal hover and correct. Uh, what I am gonna do though, is I'm going to actually um, delete the correct state. I'm gonna add an incorrect state. I'm debating if I wanna name this correct or incorrect or wrong or anyways, terminology doesn't really matter. But later on, you wanna make sure your, your mind is, is, is straight as you're building out these things. And what I'm gonna do is um, reuse that green check mark, except this one I wanna go to, oh, it doesn't just let you change the, uh, oops, click too many things, change shape. I'm gonna change shape to an X and then, this is disappearing because I managed to click on it too many times. <laughs> I don't remember how to get it to stick when I um, accidentally make it unstick. All right, anyways, uh, right. So I'm gonna do a red X if they get it in correct. All right. Oh my God, there we go. Okay, so now we've got the um, correct answer formatted. We've got the incorrect answer formatted. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate control D, the incorrect answer. I'm going to change the text to purple. All right. Then, of course, you know, put things on your slide where you want them. Uh, so that when you duplicate this slide later on, um, everything's already set up really nicely. OK, so next thing I need to do is I need to set up the variable for total points for this game. So variables, I'm gonna put in total points, it's gonna be the variable name, it's going to be a number, it's gonna start at zero because as you answer these things, you'll get the points um, added up for you. So I'm gonna add that in, click okay. And I'm gonna set the triggers here for um, what happens when you get a correct or incorrect answer. So I'm gonna start by programming out the correct answer. So the correct answer, I selected that already. Add a new trigger, I want to, First, change state of this object to correct when user clicks on it. And again, rectangle one blue, that's not very helpful. I'm actually gonna go back to the timeline and uh, change this to correct, then incorrect and incorrect. So it, help, it helps you when you build out your triggers later on, keep it really um, straight. So change the correct blue to correct and then I want to add one more. I want to adjust variable total points. Um, uh, not adjust. I want to, where is it? Uh oh, just variable. How do you just add? Oh, just for a set, not set. There it is. Add. It's been a little while since I built out a math um, trigger. Adjust variable. Add value 100. This is a 100 point question to total points when user clicks correct, okay? So just variable, add 100 total points. And then of course, I'm not gonna add that to the incorrect answers because they don't get anything when they add those. However, I am going to add the same, similar triggers for change state of this to incorrect when the user clicks. 
and then instead of oops, I didn't click on it first. It's easier if you well, I did click on it first. Change state of incorrect to incorrect when user clicks incorrect. Okay, so the only thing I'm missing now is a um, return to the game board. There was a couple ways I could program that in. Um, I think what I'll do is I will add another shape. I want to be a little fancy. I'm going to add one more shape here to the main slide. You know what? I'm going to uh, style this similarly, except take away, you know, <laughs> the correct and incorrect. All right, this is going to be return. Oh boy, start typing. Return. Okay, I'm just going to make that return. With a little bit smaller. So this I want to pop up only after the question has been answered. So I'm forcing the user to answer the question and decide if you want them to be forced to answer it or if you want to like, you know, let them be able to exit at any time. Uh, I'm gonna go timeline. I'm gonna set this to, I'm gonna name it first. I'm gonna set this to uh, hide. Oh, wait, it's not the way you wanna do it. I wanna, I'm gonna go into states and set the initial states. Initial states gonna be hidden. That's the way to do it. If you hide it on the timeline, it's, it's hidden completely from the slide board. No one will ever see it. So I'm gonna set that to hidden. And then I'm going to stay on this main slide here and add a couple of triggers. I'm going to change state of return to normal. I wanna do like a series of ors. If they click any of them, I want return to turn to normal. Well, I can just do that. Um, I can just duplicate this three times actually. Copy, Let's see if I can just paste it. Paste it, user clicks incorrect, yep. And then, okay, so I'm actually adding this as a trigger onto each object as well. Oops, just do that one. Let me copy that again. Is that okay? So now the correct answer has three triggers change it, change the state to correct, add 100 to the variable 100. I'm sorry, the variable total points, change state of return to normal when user clicks. Um, same for each of these two, just don't add the points in. All right, so state's going to change and that button's going to appear so they can return to the main board. And of course, I got to program in this with a trigger to make sure that they can jump back to the main slide game board when the user clicks return. Okay, so let me take, well, save, save periodically as you go through. Um, I always recommend too, if you spend a lot of time working on a complicated product, do a save as, so you have various versions of a project. So if you ever have a corrupted file or if there's a design choice you made and discarded and you wanna go back and save it, you can always go back and, and re, um, get that back again. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that this is working as it's supposed to, yep. So again, the original John Harker version just had a bazillion slayer layers on the game board, which I thought was really complicated. And said, I'm setting up slides for each question so everything's nice and neatly contained. Uh, so they'll click on that, go to the question, answer the question, they'll be returned to the game board. All right, so at this point, I don't have very much built out. That's by design because I just want to be able to copy and paste to save myself a ton of work. So what I'm going to do is preview the entire project. Okay. Uh, so here's my one thing I have on board. I click on it. The hover effect is working. I click on purple. The X appears and return. Oh, so one more thing is that I need to um, basically disable this once they've clicked upon it. So I'm happy that it works. Let's make sure the correct uh, state works as well. So I answered it incorrectly. Let's try answering it correctly. Great, return. Um, now, something I didn't do was put the variable on the board so I can see if the variable is working correctly. So let's go ahead and put in a text box and I'm gonna say points. And I'm going to go to insert reference to total points. Okay, so that's gonna appear right there. Let's make it a little bit fancy. I'm gonna center it and just kind of put it to the center of the screen here. Uh, sure, whatever. Let's go ahead and preview the entire project. All right, so it starts out with point zero. Go on, answer the question correctly. Return, it says points 100. 
and you can test out for the incorrect answers that should work as well, of course, and make that a little bit more fun, make it bigger again, style it however you want to make it a little bit more fun. All right, so I wanna see, I kinda wanna say the worst part is over, maybe the worst part is just beginning. The next part requires you to be really organized. As you do a lot of copying and pasting, you wanna make sure that everything's pointing to where it's supposed to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is copy and paste this 100 question to be the other questions worth 100 points. Because you have to go into that slide later on if you want it to be worth more points and edit it to be worth those points. So the first thing I'm gonna do is copy this. I'm just gonna actually do control D, one, two, three, four. And I'm just gonna move this across the board here. I uh, hope it's gonna line up at the top there. I want to make sure it's all, oops, lined up and make it so pretty on my board before I move on. There we go, okay. Okay, so again, this is why it's important or really helpful at least to name all your objects in the timeline because each of these looks exactly identical on screen, right? And down here, the <laughs> names aren't very helpful to you. Um, and they can get out of order too, actually. You can see that happened here. Okay, oh, okay. So it's gonna be category two, 100 points. As you click on each one, you can see it becomes um, highlighted on screen there. It's gonna be cat three. 100 points, and of course, I mean, your categories will have actual names theoretically, depending on what you are doing. Uh, cat four, 100 points, and then cat five, 100 points. So now each of these is still pointing back to that same slide. So what we're gonna do is actually duplicate this slide four times as well. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna change the name for each of these as well. So it's gonna be category two, 100 points, category, three 100 points, I think it's a 200 points. Anyways, category four, and am I missing one? Yes, I am missing one, that's okay. So I'll do, this one will be five. And I can actually take this one and um, move it down here so it's all nice and, anyways, ignore how I'll end up right now, I'm gonna fix that, I swear. Okay, uh, well, let me put it down here. No, this one, let me put it down there, that's okay. All right, so now I'm gonna make sure each of these is pointing to the right place, so instead of, um. Oh, I changed the, anyways, uh, make sure these do these go in the right place. So I've got the categories labeled up here and then I got the slides labeled. Now I'm gonna make sure my triggers go in the right place. It's gonna go to category two, 100. This one, category three, 100. This one, category four, 100. This one's already at category five, 100. And this one's at category one, 100. So now they're all gonna go to the right place. Um, now the only issue is, of course, is that each of these is now identical. So whichever one you go to, it's gonna be completely identical. That's not hard to change. You can go into any of these that you want. Let's go, what color is, um, oh God, give me a stupid question. Mine isn't working this late. Um, what color is the sun? Thank you the color is the sun, thank you, Nancy. All right, so we're gonna make, yellow is gonna be the correct answer. I've already got this one set up as correct. So I'm gonna change that to yellow. And type correctly, change this one to blue. And then of course, you probably wanna like, you know, change the location of these as you go through and make sure that, you know, you're mixing up the location a little bit. So not just clicking on the, the center one or the left one for every single answer. Um, uh, it's based out perfectly anywhere. And however you wanna do that is up to you. I mean, you can just do copying and pasting too to make sure everything kind of stays more in the right place. Ah, I'm really bothered these aren't perfectly spaced out. Anyways, doesn't matter. All right, so that's category two. And for example, this is just an example, you just go through and do that for each um, question. And then when you go to build out your other point questions, the 200s, the 300s, you're gonna keep on naming things. And then you'll have to go into the individual slides and change the point values and the questions there, of course, and, and rearrange the answers. So in advance, you should definitely have planned out exactly how many questions you're going to have and what your categories are gonna be. So that as you're going in and making the edits and building out those questions, you're not driving yourself crazy. Like, oh, I don't have enough questions for this category or I have too many questions for this category or I was gonna have five categories but I can only think questions for four. And you, know, you don't wanna like, undo all your hard work or have to go back and delete things. So going out and planning in advance is really helpful. Something else I would probably do is I might even get a little bit fancier and put these into scenes. You could do um, a scene for each category, actually probably the best, or you could do a scene for each point level. I'd probably do one for each category. 
So may I make this a category one? I can, I'm calling it cat editor face all. So this may just call that cat one. You can delete the default slide, put that in. And you could do that for each, um, each category. So cat two, um, let me just duplicate that. Oh, one more. And this is just nice for you. The user has no idea what's going on in the back. And this is nice for you as you're doing these things. So then as you're editing and making sure all your questions are in the right spot, you can just go and look up each category and make sure they're all in the right spot. Let's put that here. Put that slide. Put that here. Oops. Put that slide. Here. It's probably easier because I assume that you'd be programming your questions probably by category as well. And then since I'm here, I'm going to undo all the previous and next. I probably should have done that for the slides in advance. We can actually click multiple, undo all the previous and next. So I just want the navigation to be on screen alone. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go into player here. I don't love the modern player. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But I guess the classic at this point probably looks a little bit dated. Personal choice. In any case, choose the theme you want and then go and uncheck everything here. Um, leave the title up top. Sure, why not? And then if you have volume or if you have sound or captions or anything, you can put that here. I'll leave the accessibility controls there. What else can we do? Oh, yeah. Um, I always advise scaling player to fill browser window. So no matter how big or small their browser is, it'll expand to fill it, which is really nice because a lot of times the uh, default player size is really small and not really making full use of the real estate. Um, one more thing is kind of fun. If you go into colors and effects here in player, you can change the color scheme as well. So if you want to go into dark blue or black or something, you can do that. And if you want to make it more immersive, <laughs> you can change the background color as well. If you want to get really, really fancy, you can go to advanced color editing and you can actually change all of the colors for like the borders and things. And this takes a little bit of time and I have to always Google what things to change uh, so that you can actually make the player practically invisible. And it just seems like it's a, a seamless web page. I think I did something similar. Yeah, so you can see I actually did that here. So I spent a lot of time here and again, this um, raw file is in that Dropbox folder I, I linked in the chat. You can see that I made the player invisible. All the stuff is still here that's necessary on screen. The volume button's still here, but it looks otherwise like the, the game is just part of the um, background of this web page, no matter how big you make it. And so, as I mentioned earlier, we played this at one point on like an interactive TV screen and it looked really nice on that TV screen because it expanded to fill the whole thing. And it's just like, you know, an immersive game up there. So um, whenever I want to do that, though, I always have to go and like Google how to do that. And if you want me to email, find an email that to you, I can. Um, it's just a fun little tip there. And what I usually do too is I pick up the colors I want in advance and you go into more colors and actually program like the, the RGB just to make sure you're being super precise. So um, everything can be made to be completely custom. Uh, what's my page background? Maybe just a nice like, charcoal instead. Okay. I hate it when there's like two slightly different colors of dark blue that just drive me crazy. All right, let's take a look and see if this is working okay. I'm gonna save it. Again, I always recommend doing a save as periodically. Okay. So again, not super fancy looking. That's okay, you can style it yourself. The hover is working. I'm happy with that. Let's go to category three. I didn't edit any of the questions past um, I did category two, and if I goofed up on which one is which, but you can make sure that each one is working. Got 100 points on that one. Oh, I missed something crucial here. Um, do you notice what it is I forgot to do? I forgot to make a state for these to be visited or to be um, inactive. So let's do that. So another reason to stop periodically and make sure things are working. <laughs> Uh, I'll just do, I'll just do one first and then do that format painter. So I'm clicking on the one edit states. I want to add disabled. So I'm going to add that. And then what I want it to do is I want it to be, uh, just kind of grayed out. I can't remember exactly what color I had this. So I'm just gonna make it, I don't know, gray. So it's super clear that it is disabled. So now what I'm gonna do is add the trigger for this as well. Uh, not jump to slide, but change state of category 100, 100 to 
disabled when the user clicks on it. And I want to make sure I actually move this up in front of the other one so the state is changed before it jumps to this slide. Because if it jumps to the sli other slide and, and runs that trigger before it runs um, the change state, that change state may not happen. The order of your triggers matters. If one thing happens and it goes elsewhere, this other uh, trigger isn't going to run because it's already gone someplace totally else. This trigger didn't even have a chance to run. So what I'm going to do now is do the format painter again, go home, <coughs> format painter, paint that, paint that. It's adding that same disabled state to all of them, paint that, paint that. And then I'm going to go back to this first one, copy that trigger I made. I'm going to paste it on all of these. Right there. And then, of course, change that order. So that always needs to run first before it jumps to the next slide. So and this is, you know, this is the design choice. I only want my users to be able to answer each question once and they only have that one shot and then they have to move on to something else, just like in, in real Jeopardy. But that would be totally up to you. Um, how I have you want a quick to question. Yeah. So you quick you quickly did the coding. Usually what I'm trying to copy and paste, I have to change a bunch of stuff. It looked like you clicked somewhere so and it makes it really easy somehow sometimes just... storyline makes, makes your life really easy when i copied this original um trigger this one change shade of uh this this object is called cat one 100 to disabled mm -hmm. when the user clicks this when i pasted this to the other ones it automatically changed to be customized mm -hmm. for each button so storyline is really nice and did that work for me so i didn't have to go like oh which one is it and do the whole yeah, that's thing what i'm normally doing <laughs> yeah yeah, so sometimes you get really lucky. It's a really straightforward trigger. Storyline has a built-in function to automatically change that for you. A lot of the time, it's not so easy. Okay. Most of the time, yeah. I'm, I'm fiddling with all the settings as well. All right, so save one more time. Again, save as periodically. Let's preview the whole thing and see what happens. All right, colors of sky, blue, return, got 100 points. Colors of sun, it's purple. No points. Oh, the disabled state isn't working. You see that? Why isn't it working? Hmm. I wonder why that's not working. It's always good to have a, a live problem. <laughs> People say that helps them feel better when the presenter has a, um, a problem live as well. I'm surprised that's not changing to disabled. Yeah, I would All right. think it would be. So what I'm going to do is just create a dummy one here. I'm going to take away the jump to. I'm going to make this into this my um. So I'm going to test this individually and see what's going on. So it has the three states normal, hover disabled, and this. Oops. It says change to dummy one hundred disabled when user clicks dummy. So I'm going to preview just the slide and see why that's not working. Oh, oh, I. Hmm. So it does work. It's just not saving the state when we come back. So when visiting resume saved state, let's try that. Yeah, so Captivate Spunky like this too, is that you actually have to go on and like make sure it, it saves the state of it. Now we put these in the correct order. So it should be changing that state. I don't know why it's not showing that when we come back. So let's preview the whole thing. See if it works this time. So I mean, that one works live. <sighs> oh, okay, now it works. Okay, so that was an easy fix. So I just had to go. I'm on the game board slide here. You just go into the settings here, and when revisiting, make sure you say resume saved state. So otherwise, it always defaults to automatically decide. Sometimes what the software decides isn't what you want to do. So resume saved state there, and that's it. All right, so I won't belabor anymore. It just gets a little more complicated from here. You need to, if you want to do the 200 category, duplicate these with the 200 category, then you'll need to duplicate the slides for each one. What I would actually probably do is at this point, I would make sure all these questions are correct. And then I would probably build out the question slides for each category, make sure they're named correctly. And then I would come back to the game board and start duplicating the answer buttons and linking those to their proper slides. That would probably be the most straightforward way to proceed to make sure that everything's as it's supposed to be. And then of course, you know, maybe build out an entire category first, the 200, 300, 400, whatever, however far you want to go so that 
those slides are built out and you can reuse them for the additional categories rather than having, I don't know, whatever, whatever process makes most sense to you. But in any case, be orderly about it and make sure you are not doing any more work than you have to do. All right, so that is it from me. This will be in the Dropbox folder. Um, it's called Jeopardy in Progress. It hasn't uh, synced yet to Dropbox, but it will. This can be the built out example. Oh, I have it open, so let me do it. I'll may change that name later. Um, that link is in the chat box. So I mean, that's that's it. That's that's it in a nutshell. Obviously, you'll make it pretty. You'll build it out with your own questions. Just write out your questions in advance. Do as little work as you as you need to do to get this done. And um, just stay really organized with renaming everything and uh, keeping yourself straight with the triggers. All right, so that's it for me. Do you have any questions? I had one quick question. Can you go back to the player? I yep. was curious, um, you can click the option to make it fill the screen. I just wanted to catch that I was taking note, but I missed what it was. So player. And then you go into, I believe it's other. Yep, yeah, you go into oh, other. Player, other. Okay. And then player size, it, it um, defaults to lock player, which I hate okay. <laughs> because sometimes it ends up really teeny tiny. Um, and I like to hit scale player. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And then you can choose what you want to happen. Always resume, never resume when they come back. And if you get into colors and effects, that's where you can get really fun with all the colors and effects too. And again, in this, um, in the demo file that I have in Dropbox, I've got the colors set up to make that game board to blend in seamlessly with the background. So you can always reuse that. Okay. Oh, thank you, Rachel. I see your comment. Thank you for attending. I appreciate it. Any other questions, <laughs> thoughts, anything? It was great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming, Nancy. I appreciate you. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Okay. Thanks.